In this lab session, we will be creating AWS code artifact. In our earlier session, we have created code commit as our code repository. Now in this lab, we will be creating code artifact repository for our software packages. So let's move to code artifact in AWS Management Console. In AWS Management Console under service, search for code artifact. Code artifact says, it is the artifact repository to securely store, publish and share software packages. So click on create repository. Give a repository name, description is optional. And here is the optional option for public upstream repository. It says code artifact public upstream repositories are intermediate repositories that connect your repository to official package authorities such as Maven central repository and NPM. There are a list of repositories listed over here. You can select Maven, Google Android, NPM like this. I'm not selecting for now, click on next. Now this is saying that we have to create a domain first. So when we are creating a code artifact repository, we have to create a domain first. And domain doesn't mean that your root 53 domain, but it is a domain is a grouping of repository and it is asking in which account I want to create. So I will be creating in this account, the account I'm using. So it's saying no domain in this account. That's fine. And I want to give a domain name. So basically it is good to change my repository name and put the domain name like this because the repository name is as per your project or team name. So if I just give the repository name as AWS TG demo repo do next and here I put the domain name as AWS take guide. It's good because your domain name is as per your company name and the repository name because you can have multiple repositories within a domain because domain is a grouping of repositories. Now in additional configuration, it is saying that customer managed key, AWS managed key or customer managed key. So AWS managed key is by default selected. Let it be click on next. This is the review page only. So just click on create repository. Our code artifact repository is ready now. So if you see, click on details, your domain name, your repository, ARN, and there is no package as of now. And there is a button, it is very important, view connection instruction. Now, when we have created this repository in code artifact, we have to use the connection details for this repository in our Maven settings.xml and form.xml. I'm considering that we are using project type as Maven. Click on view connection details. Well, that before you can connect to your repository, you must install AWS CLI and configure your AWS credential. If you don't have the CLI installed, in one of my sessions, I have explained how to install AWS CLI in your system. So at this point of time, I'm considering that you have your CLI installed. So click on this menu option and select Maven because in this tutorial, I'm considering the project type as Maven. If you have different project types, suppose NPM, Gradle, PIP, you can select accordingly. So if I am selecting Maven, it will give me all the connection details like this. You can see that there are two things, manual setup for both pulling from repository, pushing to your repository. So it's better I am showing you pushing to your repository first because when you will be building your Spring Boot project, you want your artifact to be pushed into code artifact repository. So this is the part which you have to update in your form.xml as it says that add this distribution management configuration to your form.xml. I have opened my project in Eclipse, open form.xml and simply paste the code snip snippet over here. Copy this distribution management part, click on copy and paste it over here. That's it from form.xml update part. Now we have to do one more thing because once you will be trying to push your software packages to your code artifact repository, 
your repository should authorize you. So for that, click on this pulling from repository, this part, okay? Export a code artifact authorization token for authorization to your repository from your preferred shell. Token expires in 12 hours. So this code snippet will create one authorization token which will last for 12 hours. So by 12 hours, whatever the push or pull operation you do with your code artifact repository, it will work. After 12 hours, again, you have to create that authorization token. Now see, it is showing export and this rest of the command. Now, if you are using Windows command prompt, let me copy this command. I have copied it. Let me paste it in a notepad. Now, if you are using Windows command prompt as I'm using in this lab session. So export this command will not run. We have one alternate command for that. And let me show you that how you will get the command which suits for your Windows command prompt or PowerShell or Mac. In AWS documentation, you will see a section. I will share the link in the resource slide and you will get the direct link over here. And in this AWS documentation part, it says pass an auth token using an environment variable. Well, now if you are using Mac OS or Linux, use the export command, how you are getting directly over here. You do not need to change anything. But if you are using Windows using default command shell or Windows PowerShell, then the command is little bit different. So in this tutorial, as I am using Windows default command shell, that's why I'm copying this format, going to my notepad, pasting it over here, and I'm just replacing this part in the Windows command part. Well, now copy this part, open Windows command prompt, and paste it over here. And before clicking enter, remember that you have your AWS CLI installed, and you have done your AWS configuration by AWS configure and it's saying that an error has occurred when calling the get authorization token operation user this is not authorized to perform code artifact get authorization token on the resource this particular because I have one user already configured in AWS CLI so I have to do the AWS configure again with the user, the test user we have created, which is AWS demo user. It is asking for the key ID, add the secret access key. Now it is asking the default region name and remember that you should put the default region name, otherwise it will not work. And default output format, just put enter over you. That's fine, okay? Now remember one thing, definitely you will not show to your access key ID and secret access key to anyone because I will be deleting this user before publishing this tutorial. So I am just showing you every steps. Now let's run our command. Now it's showing one more error. It is an error occurred access denied exception while calling the get authorization token operation for code artifact, right? So it is because the user, which is our AWS PG demo, it doesn't have the permission or the policy attached for our code artifact. So let's go to IAM. Search for IAM, click on IAM, select the user, and you see that we have two policies attached. One is for code commit, another is for DynamoDB, and let's add permission, attach existing policy, search for code artifact. And I'm selecting code artifact admin access. Click on review, add permission. That's it. Now let's go back to our command prompt. Give it a try. Perfect. Now it has created the token and token is from this part where it says that code artifact underscore token equals this. And we have to copy this part. Just copy it and go to your settings.xml. You will find your settings.xml under your M2 directory. So I'm just opening my M2 directory. I have opened my settings.xml over here and the token which has been created, I have to paste it under this server. 
where is the username as AWS password, we have to paste this token. Now, let me tell you where I got this profile and the server part. So let me take you to the code artifact once again. Here in code artifact view connection instruction, you have the next two things. Add a profile containing your repository to your settings.xml. So I'm just copying it and just replacing over here. And for the servers, I'm just copying this part and we will replace the password part like this, okay? So if I just copy it like this, I will keep the password part only and that's it. Let me tell you one thing. Someone may have realized that you don't have settings.xml inside your .m2 directory. You do not need to worry. Just simply create a new file called settings.xml and put this code. Well, now let's go back and in our connection details, we have this optional part to set the mirror. We don't need to set the mirror as of now, okay? So the token we have created, it will last for 12 hours from now. Let's go to our Maven project in Eclipse. Here is our Maven project. Now I am just doing a clean Maven clean. And now let's do Maven install. It successfully built. Now we have to do Maven deploy to push our software packages to our code artifact repository. So MVN deploy. As you see that it is downloading from our code artifact repository. And now pushing the artifact. Uploading this artifact to our code artifact repository. It has successfully uploaded the software packages. Now let's go to our code artifact repository, do a refresh. And here is our packages, which we pushed from our system to this code artifact repository. If you see this, click on this and you have two package versions. One is unlisted, another is published because our artifact version was 0.0.1 .0 snapshot version. So this is how you create code artifact repository, use code artifact repository to push your software packages in the repository or pull from the repository as well. And I have shown you how you can connect from your system to code artifact repository. Now let's move to the next section of this tutorial.